Hello, this is Scott from Optics Realm. It's October 2011. Today we're going to do tutorial 4, more first order imaging in a lens. But today we're going to provide an intuitive approach to how a lens images. We're going to do that with a mechanical model. And it's, it's really a nomograph, and that's kind of a big fancy word for saying, for a way to take an equation and make a graph out of it. And it's done in such a way that it allows you to really intuitively grasp what a lens is doing. So just to recall, we've got the lens maker's equation. Uh, one over your object, or one over your image distance equals one over f with some operator plus one over your object distance. And if you've got a Cartesian coordinate system, the operator is a plus. If you've got an, uh, um, oh, what's the other one? I forget what it's called. I'll put a bubble in later. It's a negative sign. There's got to be an easier way. These signs confuse me, but I, again, I'm easily confused. So here's a notional way to have a nomograph to understand how a simple lens works. And again, I find it incredibly powerful and very important. You have an optical axis, and on that optical axis rests your objects. You, your object and your images can extend from plus and minus infinity. It's a very important concept to get in imaging. Your object on the left is a real object, on the right is a virtual object. I'll be going in detail what those are. Your image, also on the same axis, uh, onto the left is a virtual, and to the right is a real. So we're going to separate. These axes lie on top of each other in reality, but we're going to separate them to understand what a lens is doing. What do I mean by a real and virtual object? Well, a real object is one that's out in front of your lens. It's real. If this is coming from another optical system. You could put a piece of paper here and, and visually see this object, this point source. Whereas a virtual, virtual object you're focusing inside the lens. We take these rays that are converging to a point. We put dashes to show they're on the other side of the lens, and they come here. Okay, and that's different. This object is different than what your image is. So it also works for a, an image. A, a real image is one that is to the right. You put a piece of paper here and image it. If you've got a pinhole here that's illuminated, you put a piece of paper here, you will see it. Likewise, with an image that is diverging, raises, rays that diverge, you project them back, these dashed lines, here's your image. You cannot put a piece of paper there and view that image. It's virtual. So what are we going to do? Very simple. We're going to take these two optical axes, we're going to take the object, object axes, and we're going to rotate it clockwise 90 degree. 90 degrees. Real object on top, virtual object on bottom. This creates a Cartesian coordinate system. There's an animated GIF, very simple, that's showing what is happening. We're just taking these two axes that in reality lie on top of each other and we're rotating the object axis. Now we have a coordinate system. And again, just to, to, to hammer home, repetition here helps us learn. Object, real object up top, virtual object down below, real image to the right, virtual image to the left. Let's add another axis. Let's create a single data point for the focal length at f comma f comma f. So in our Cartesian coordinate system, we're going to insert a point that is the focal length. And in fact, there's really an axis here that goes through the origin. This axis is your focal length axis. We've got three axes here that are all interacting with each other that mimics the lens maker's equation. This axis works for positive and negative, for diverging and converging focal lengths. Here's another demonstration. We rotate, get a Cartesian coordinate system, insert a point at your focal length, comma, focal length, create an axis at this point with a unity slope, and you can see the focal length is going to vary. And again, I'm making the radii thinner and fatter to show the focal length is increasing and decreasing accordingly. How do we image with this? This is where the real power of this comes from. Now we have a load line, and that's this line right here. This line has to go through your focal length point, this point right here. This acts as your fulcrum. So to see, let's say we've got this fixed focal length, ignore the axes, we've got a fixed focal length here. 
to see how the image object relationship changes, all we have to do is rotate this line and keep it fixed in here. Extremely powerful for qualitatively understanding how a lens works. Another animated GIF I've got here, I'm going to move the lens and show the nomograph on the left and the ray trace on the right. Insert the fulcrum. We're going to move the real object over to this location here. We've got an object here, trace rays, and you repeat for the image distance. We've got a real image that comes over here. So here's just some quick snapshot, three examples for a positive lens. This first one is one-to-one -one imaging. We get one-to-one -one imaging where your object and image distance have the same length. And that occurs when that length is two times your focal length. So you see, here's your focal length here. Your object is two times. It comes to two, your image is two times your focal length, which is your back focal length here. This is done by a, another, another line that's got a negative one slope. But you can see 2F and 2F. Now if we pivot this line, or let's, let's put a point, let's put an object point right at your focal length. That's right here. It's got to go through your focal length fulcrum. You see this line never, act, never intersects the imaging ac axes. What that says is your image is at infinity. This is collimated output. Let's put in a virtual object. So that's down here. Again, the input rays are coming to a focus inside this lens. And you can see, using this load line, you're actually going to get a real image. And the image is within the focal length. Here's your focal length, and your image is within there. Let's go through that in detail. We're going to fix the focal length, and we're going to vary the conjugates. Real object here, real, real image here, load line. We stay through the fulcrum. Let's start pivoting. Here is collimated output. Your image is really far away. Again, you don't intersect, so you're collimated. We keep pivoting counterclockwise. This load line shows your, your virtual object. I'm sorry, your virtual image. Now, this is another GIF. I've taken all the extraneous stuff out of it. And I'm simply rotating the load line about the fulcrum. And you can see how the conjugates change. And it's very, very powerful. Now, for instance, let's keep the focal length. Let's vary the focal length. Let's keep the object distance fixed. I'm keeping it fixed here. And you can see as you vary the focal length how that line is going to change on your nomograph. Now, I'm kind of in this case, I'm changing what the fulcrum is to um, show the object is fixed. This also works for a negative lens. I'm not going to go into detail here. There's sort of a one-to-one -one imaging relationship, collimated input, and how you get a real image in a negative lens. I'm limited by time. All these animated GIFs will be on my website, opticsrealm.com. You can download them. You can go and view them. I'll have some there that I just didn't have time to get into this video. Let's talk about quantitative. So this is great for understanding what's going on. You can also use it for quantitative calculations without getting confused with the sign, sign convention. Let's, let's assume we've got a focal length of 100 millimeters. We've got a real object that is 150 millimeters from the lens. So a real object, 150 millimeters from the lens, going through the fulcrum. This is 100 millimeters. We know we're going to have a real image. We know that a priori. Now we use similar triangles to do the computation. We start with this first triangle here, image, origin, object. Okay, And that's represented by your object distance by your image distance, object by image. Then we're going to take this other, this little triangle here. It's a little more complicated. It's Vertical distance is your object distance minus your focal length divided by this length here, your focal length. Simple algebra now. You rearrange and you compute. You get 300 millimeters. And you know, your sign isn't telling you it's a real image. Your nomograph is telling you it's a real image. There's a good reference here, um, a book called Practical Optics. It's got, uh, it shows this nomograph, object, image, focal length. Here's some homework, and I neglected to put the third homework on. These are some examples. I will list what this homework is on my website. 
I'll provide a link in the YouTube channel. Uh, please take a look at it and play with it. And please understand this nomograph. I find it amazingly powerful. If we're standing in the hallway, you know, kind of, uh, you know, shooting the bull on, on test equipment or a camera, I have this image, this nomograph running in my head and it allows me to do these computations really quick. Thanks for tuning in. Again, this is Scott from opticsrealm.com. Please stop by and say hello. I'd love some feedback. Thank you.